Hello everyone, welcome to the episode 84 of Soul Lead Saturday. The guest we have today, Tracy Lemore, high profile international award winning publicist, founder and managing director of Lamory Media, Universal Women's Network 2020 Women of Inspiration winner of the Women in Media, author of the book Get Trapped, Build Your Brand with Effective Public and Media Relations. Working across industries from major entertainment projects to small businesses, Tracy is passionate about amplifying important messages and being a voice for those who most need one. Recognized by media around the world for her 20-year campaign that helped free an innocent man from death row to her work, getting clients major media attention, she is the winner of the first place Platinum Award, Hamilton Spectacles Reader's Choice for Public Relations. She has been frequently quoted in the international media on both human rights issues and as a public relations thought leader. A frequent guest on TV, radio, and high-profile podcasts around the world on topics of leadership, empowerment, and entrepreneurship, as well as all aspects of media and public relations. Wow, this like seems like a very amazing career journey and uh, very interesting area of expertise as well, PR and media. So let's just welcome her and hear more about her career journey. How did she find her area of interest and managing to lead that? Hey, hi, Tracy. Very happy to have you on the show and really appreciate all your time and consideration being on the show. No, thank you. I'm very thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. And uh, to begin with this episode, we have the first general segment, which is like a passion or the interest. So how did you find your interest in media and public relations? And what steps did you take to pursue it further? So, yeah, it was funny. It wasn't like I didn't look for it as a career and then sort of start doing it. I actually learned how to do the basics of it before I was looking for it as a career. Um, I was looking for it. I learned how to write a press release basically on Alta Vista a precursor to Google way back in 1998. And that was oh. uh, about the, close to your, your area, actually, about Philadelphia, about the mm-hmm. case of a man who was innocent on death row in Pennsylvania. And that was, I ended up leading a 19 year campaign that, you know, I learned how to write a press release. My husband, Dave, learned how to make a website. And through all that, we ended up being on, and, and also we were, um, made a, or, a big organization called the Canadian Coalition Kids of Death Family when we were in our 20s long time ago um that was i'm 51 now and but that ended up teaching me how to do that media messaging we got on cnn msnbc Mm -hmm. tv we were in our late 20s we had no media experience we had no legal experience and we were being interviewed on you know some of the top legal shows in america by some of all the famous you know legal people that you see on tv every day so that taught me took about uh, another 12 or 13 years before it hit me in terms of entrepreneur thinking and, oh my goodness, but the, all that time I was doing just sales jobs and, you know, just doing entry level jobs and then mid level uh-huh. jobs. That was my 20s and 30s. And meanwhile, I was making these major media hits and getting major media attention and, you know, all that. But I wasn't thinking about that as anything to pursue in uh-huh. terms of work. It was successful in what it was doing. And I wasn't thinking, oh, but then one day when I was 41, and again, I'm 51 now, so this is a decade ago, it literally hit me, wait a minute, <laughs> I've been <laughs> writing press releases, all that, all that media messaging I've been doing, I know how to get into them. You know, when I was involved with a political campaign, I'd be like, oh, mm-hmm. my press release, nobody else knew how to do that. So I suddenly realized, yeah, you know, I know how to access the media and to make the media mm-hmm. listen to you. And that's something that I could turn into a business. So I've been doing that for the last decade. And now I literally work across industries. I'm globally recognized, internationally awarded, working across industries, across borders. Um, so working mm-hmm. with everybody from celebrities to creatives, to small business people, to solopreneurs. To startups. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's great, actually, you know, because along the way you found that what you're good at and uh, you decided to do it as an entrepreneur level. So that is and a good start kind of a career strategy. You know, and build up my confidence. I started as a yeah. freelancer. You don't have to, it's not a big bar. You can just, you know, there's the internet. You can figure it out, contact yeah. people. And once I had a couple of contracts, well, then I started feeling more confident. And eventually I opened up a, a, a small business, a general partnership. Uh-huh. And then now last year, nearly a year ago now, we incorporated. So now we're Inc., Lamore Media Inc. 
And uh, mm-hmm. that's, yeah, so that all grew from, you know, a young activist deciding to learn how to write a press release. Wow, that's great, actually. And uh, really appreciate, actually, your time because this is like, you know, must needed guest kind of for me. Uh, so thank you so much. We have the next segment, which is more or like a questions from the audience. So when I got to know that you are coming, right? So I just shared your profile and uh, we got a couple of questions from the audience. So here I just shortlisted two uh, just because of the time limit. So the first question that we have under that segment is what is influencer marketing and why do we need it? What's the difference between public relations and advertising? Okay, so what's the difference between public relations and advertising? So basically, PR, we call it earned media, as opposed to, you know, the media that you buy, which is advertising. Mm-hmm. And so one client said to me, for example, after six weeks of working together, you changed my business and my life. Mm-hmm. Anybody can buy an ad. But when, in her case, she said, you made investors take us more seriously. So she was looking for investors mm-hmm. for her startup. But whether you're looking for more customers, whether you're looking to differentiate yourself from the competition, you know, anybody with deep pockets can buy an ad and today's consumer understands that, you know, mm-hmm. but when you, you can't buy, you know, Reader's Digest or Forbes or Entrepreneur talking to you as an mm-hmm. expert in your field. I get all my clients in Authority Magazine and then Thrive Global, which is like Huffington Post. I've got all my power women, I call them power women, across industries clients last week featured in NBC California on an interview uh-huh. on Sheila Mack show and on Ticker TV in Australia, which has 35% American viewership and is Australia's mm-hmm. biggest 24 hour news network like CNN and Bloomberg. And it's got a, yes. so, uh-huh. you know, this is the day, you, you know, you can buy an ad in all, all those things. Uh-huh. And to have you be sitting there as the expert being interviewed about what you do and why you're a game changer, that literally, it, it acts like an ad in terms of the people that initially see it. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then on top of that, when you put that on your page, it excites your current customers. They start sharing it, Mm -hmm. it differentiates you from your competitor. If I'm going, I use real estate as an example a lot because you'd be surprised. Everyone knows a real estate agent or 10 agents, right? Mm -hmm. Outside, you can't help but see five ads for real estate agents. Yet every single day, every day as publicists, agents listen up. We see media from, you know, Reader's Digest to Oprah.com to literally Uh every media think of NBC asking for quotes from real estate agents recently I've seen this things like you know your advice as an agent on what's the best way to um you know to sell your house to paint what color should you paint your kitchen or in this market are more people doing this or that with their houses or literally every day we hear these requests you get quoted I have a, an agent client in Ottawa now he's been quoted internationally so now he's globally recognized mm-hmm. right now on his page he's got five uh-huh. articles Hollywood Times, you know, Formidable Men magazine. So now if you're going to look in Ottawa for a real estate agent, because we all know, you know, they all look exactly the same online. They mm-hmm. all have the house. They're all standing there. They all say, oh, we sell great. You know, they're all the same if you don't know what you're looking for. Right. So mm-hmm. if you want to differentiate yourself, if you're internationally quoted, that's not the, I mean, you can buy all the ads you want, like all your competitors do. But if you can mm-hmm. put up your authority magazine article, you're quoted in, my Ottawa clients in, in, in the Hollywood Times, mm-hmm. in California. But now anybody in California, and that's not, and not as an ad. He's in there as being quoted as a globally recognized agent on the market over there in the nation's capital, the country above you, you know? So mm-hmm. anybody that's looking there for, you know, vacation space in Canada or whatever, they're going to go to the guy they just read about in Hollywood Times. So it acts as an ad that way, but far better in terms of building your credibility in that, that uh, thought leadership, you know, that phrase thought leadership. Wow, that's really pretty interesting and insightful for the audience. And uh, one more question that we have under that segment is what personality characteristics are most important to be successful in public relations? Oh, that's a good question. It's a weird kind of set of, that's a really good question. Um, it's, a, it's a weird, set, but I always say it comes down to two things, communication and mm-hmm. contacts, right? And the contact is, people management as well people mm-hmm. you know you people you know you have a like a big network mm-hmm. right not like fake hey networking but i mean just natural network through all the things that you do and i'm forever and i always say my job gets easier in some ways the longer i do it 
because the longer the network I have, not just in terms of media that I can connect even with. Mm-hmm. Because 10 years ago, people hired me, I'd say at the beginning, oh, we don't know what exactly media we get, we'll get some. Now I can say, well, I know it's very likely I'll get you NBC, check TV, and then we don't know what else is going to come our way that month. But we're, I already have these relationships developed where as long as you fit in your part, you know, you obviously the, the pitch is everything. Just like pitching to you as a podcaster, mm-hmm. say it's your TV show, it's got to be on brand. Doesn't matter how well you're friends with the podcaster. If I bring you a zookeeper that has nothing to do with anything, it's not going to be for your show, you know. Uh-huh. So yeah, it'll be a great fit for somebody else's show, but not mm-hmm. for your. So it's all about knowing that audience and how to you mm-hmm. know pitch it. So I, you, so yeah. So number one, you have to be quick on your feet. You have to be really good with all kinds of different people. Yeah. So that's what you have to be good with people not in like a fake phony way you know where you're trying to manipulate them because that's not really what it's all about you're not going to be successful at that but in a way that you really are talking to people and you respect people and you see the person in front of you and you you know so you have to really like people Mm -hmm. and be able to talk a lot and and then other than that you have to be strategic you know you have to be a thinker you have to be looking for opportunities and it's a lot of it's you know hey there's a lot of vip parties and travel but there's Uh also a lot of waiting sitting up till four in the morning, you know, wrapping your brain, being strategic, looking for global opportunities, you have to be a good writer, you know, mm-hmm. so it's a lot of, you know, but uh, people traditionally come to it from journal, a lot of people come to e- either a five-year university course, or mm-hmm. they come to it from journalism, because then they know what to pay. So it's all about, if, you, if you're a good writer, and then, then that's where it starts. And then if you can understand about the pitch, and then you can be able to talk to people and be able to encapsulate who they are and what they want to do in that one pager and you know so there's a whole bunch of different components to it wow nice actually and that is particularly you know you highlighted a couple of points when it comes to the personality traits so it is not just about yourself it is about people and the behaviors as well so it should be like a people management moreover when it comes to the public relations so thank you so much for sharing that and moving towards our next segment which is more or like a fun or the relaxation segment here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three keywords which are more or associated with your profile. And you have to just tell me, you know, what comes to your mind. It can be kind of a replacement keyword or it can be a short definition or whatever creativity that you can bring to this segment. Uh, we are welcome to see that. So are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So the first word that we have is change. Can I just say a word after it, right? Yeah. So you say one word and I just say the word that, okay. Yes. So the first word you have is change. Help. What comes to your mind when you heard the hear the word change? Yeah, I said help, the word help. Oh, like, okay. Help oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then second keyword is empowerment. Uh, women. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why do you think so? Uh, I guess because I, I, I get, you know, ever since I got the women of inspiration, I've actually been in, in all these, you know, suggested to the, I've, I've been open, my mind been open to this world of women empowerment, I guess. Not so much for me as, you know, people holding me up and asking me to speak at these events and stuff. So I'm realizing that a lot of that attitude where I just had where I was just like, no, I'm not going to stop me. Just push your head. It's really the key to a lot of things. So I've been brought in to speak to a lot of those, you know, women empowerment kind of, Mm-hmm. That's, that's nice. Nice. That's what and, yeah, and thank you for sharing. And the third word that we have is media. Media? Yes. Oh. What comes to your mind? It is a big word for you, actually. Yeah, well, it's hard to even think of one one word didn't even come to mind. The first phrase that came to my mind when you say that was own it. <laughs> ah, wow. This because, is yeah, hard. like yeah. yeah, and maybe it makes me think of that. It's not a word, but you know, there was a, a Jello Biafra who was an old punk fan from the '80s called the Dead Kennedys. In my in my teenage years, I listened to that, and they had a song called uh, or line. Yeah, it actually wasn't even a song, but he had a line that said, uh, "Don't <laughs> hate the media, become the media." Mm-hmm. And, and then we do, we're doing that now, it. and we're doing that now, right? We're all having yeah. our own media, even if. And my job specifically is to give it news to the media. Mm-hmm. And then they, they disseminate that to the public if they believe that it's, you know, a good story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that shows your passion. The way you said that when, when, when I said the word media, you just said that own it, right? So that is the interesting <laughs> fact about passion, actually. You just own that particular area of expertise. <laughs> yeah, no messing yeah. around. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. And it was quite interesting. 
so moving towards our next segment which is more or like, like you know exploring your career work or volunteering and we are keeping it little short so we have one question under this segment which is like you know when i came across your interview uh, which is like a blog actually we written by the interviewer five things i wish someone told me before i became a ceo would you like to tell us more about it oh yeah i can't even remember what i said in that particular one now but i would you know if you want to ask me about the things i said but i know but i you know there's still obviously i'm still growing and learning all the time and by the, when i made when i did that one we hadn't incorporated yet and now we've incorporated so i'm not even just in my title now is founder and managing director and mm-hmm. i've learned a whole bunch of new things in that and also in speaking with a lot of women who are running actual startups where they're looking for funding as which is a different story than a small service business which is me right mm-hmm. i've learned even more about you know and it's funny because one of my clients you know she says she's been like me she's been a power woman she was in media her whole life in tv and film before moving to follow her path in the startup wow. and now she's going and looking at funding and looking at and she's saying it's funny because i never felt and she said i mean and i get it because i would be like this too she goes i'm almost embarrassed to say i never felt cuz i never felt like being a woman was ever keeping me down or keeping me out of anything mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but she said once i started entering those rooms of the high finance where we're talking about giving millions of dollars she goes i couldn't believe it they were actually talking to my partner who i had hired she hired yeah. a male partner you know a, a junior partner to do some of it because he was from the finance world and they would sort of just overlook her the head of the company for that you know and so she was like wow i'm actually seeing how in some parts of the world or in some rooms or in some areas still that women are still like um wait a minute uh yeah I'm, and it's funny cuz she was like and I'm not the person that ever felt that even in film and TV and me too cuz I just barrel ahead and if you're in my way I probably just like you know <laughs> so it's I, a lot of those people just part their ways but uh-huh. she thought when it came to the finance and getting the big bucks it was uh-huh. you know you did feel still junior so we still i learned too when it comes to like accessing funding and money and stuff there's still some barriers that some of us women feel that we still need guidance for and there's still are and i learned through that there are actually a lot of uh startup and or not just mm-hmm. startup uh, whatever you call them like incubators and stuff like that working with women startups so wow this is awesome and thank you so much for sharing next uh, moving towards our next segment which is more over like you know second last segment of this particular episode about tips and advice so in this particular segment i'm just going to ask you the question like you know any tips or advice would you like to give to the students or the professionals who are looking to get into this area which is particularly media and public relations and grow in that particular area or looking that as their long term career option you can support your answer with the books and courses as well here to give them yeah. a more guidance. Absolutely. Absolutely and not to be advertorial because one thing is advertorial when you see the difference between advertising and and what I do advertorial versus editorial is a phrase to remember. Editorial is what gets you in the newsroom, advertorial is the newsroom will send you to the ad department, you know. Mm-hmm. So this part is editorial, this part is advertorial. but it also answers your question. My upcoming book and get repped builds your brand with effective public and media relations. It actually does. I wouldn't have brought it up except for it actually does. In writing it, I started thinking mm-hmm. I should add a part to, you know to it because originally it was for like entrepreneurs and executives about mm-hmm. what they how they can incorporate. But then I added a whole section which I'm working on right now mm-hmm. about that specifically because I'm thinking, wow, I didn't go what about the people cuz I don't think you have to go to school for 5 years more power to you if you are they're learning some great things and I'm going to hire one and you know people who just went to school mm-hmm. and stuff but it's not the only path some people come to it through journalism why because they they can write and they understand what PR is so if you can write all of now we know is all you have to do is understand how PR is what PR is because it's no and then just get your first client and then get your uh-huh. second client there's no certification you can go join the pr whatever you know group there's no like certificate you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so you, you just start it if you're good at it if you're a good communicator if you're a good writer if you have some background in marketing you have uh-huh. some idea of what you're doing already but it's not marketing because you don't care about sales in this the roi the return on investment is not the sale i my return on investment if my client hires me again i know obviously it's working for them they're getting clients or they're getting whatever but my success is is that media cuz that media uh-huh. is what elevates you and builds you and whether you're you know selling 
whatever now, or you're selling a book now or whatever. It's about building you as a thought leader so that whenever you open your, you know, you, I'm putting the gravitas and respect behind you so that when you open your mouth to apply for that job, to get the corner office, to, to get the customer, to, you know, you are to sell that book, you're able to do uh-huh. it. So yeah. Anyway. So yeah, if you're a good communicator and you think, Hey, that's something I could do. You probably can, you know, I literally, I learned how to do it by, by, be, you know, Googling all the best I uh-huh. press releases and looking at the format. So there's more you want to start, it, you know, the press release. But even then, there's a million tips. If I just start reading about it and look up Hera, which is help reporter out, look up source bottle in Australia, a quote. These are things where you can either for free or for a small fee, you can get a direct connection to reporters who are looking for quotes for upcoming stories. Uh-huh. Things like, you know, for Reader's Digest, like I said, uh-huh. you know, they're looking for uh-huh. someone who, can speak to a psychologist who can speak to whatever, a entrepreneur who can speak about blah, blah, blah. So check those things out. And then once you have a grasp of it, you can start offering those services to other entrepreneurs. Start with small businesses that you know, your friend that wrote a book, start, you know, and start to just start small. Start to, if I just thought of this, you know, you're asking specific. If anybody is interested in this as a path, I don't normally do this, but I'll do like a, you know, we can do like an arrangement for one hour one-time coaching or something i can give you some actual tips that you could actually start saying to a new client i'm going to be your publicist you know i'll do this 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 Uh because i could tell you how to do those things so you're starting small like with a mini intro to pr blah blah blah. but this is honestly it's i'm I'm grateful every day of this fell into my path when it's not COVID. literally in 2019 Uh girl i had nine business trips with eight clients to five oh. countries on four continents, and I didn't pay for anything. Mm-hmm. Nice hotel and the VIP party. But I work hard and I get results, and I and that's why you know that happens. But you know, there's a better life than just slaving away to do. If you can write and you can think and you're strategic and you're smart and mm-hmm. you're up for a challenge and you're good with people, yes, it's a whole world better way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, just to mention it here, actually, uh, like Tracy's book, Get Raped, Create Your Own Personal Brand. I would encourage audience as well to check it out. And uh, the way she's talking, uh, definitely she's leading her own area of expertise. So we are going to come up, coming up to the closure of this particular episode, which is leadership. So you are truly leading your area of interest. So what is your leadership style and any specific leader that you always follow or admire and why? Say, I missed the last part, which when leader, what lead, is your leader yeah. that I always so follow? It is something about your leadership style plus any specific leader that you always follow or admire and why? So, okay. So for the, the, the second part of the question, any leader that I follow, I don't know if it was a leader, you know, in the sense that you're asking in terms of a business leader, but, it, but, you know, when you say the word leader, I always phrase comes into my head, but I learned when I was a teenager in the eighties uh-huh. about from John Lennon and he, cause you know, John Lennon, the singer from the Beatles, but he was saying, cause he was a social justice activist. He was saying, and I remember this came into my head and I was like, Oh, that's really powerful. When I was young, don't follow leaders. He was saying, don't follow us. Don't follow me and Yoko. Be your own leader. If, you, if we're doing something that you like, join us. We're more powerful together. But if you're doing, if you think of something, just do it. Maybe we'll join you. And I remember thinking, like that was, you know, as a kid, when you listen to the people that, you know, when you still care about the things your heroes say, you know, that was like, oh, that's a good message, you know? And I, and I remember taking that as an, even as a 15 year old, be like, hey, you know what? That's right. I shouldn't wait for somebody uh-huh. else. I can do things. And so literally that was something that's led me through my whole life stuff that I cared about as a kid, not business, but activists and stuff, you know, that 19 year campaign ended up freeing Jimmy Dennis from death row with the help of lawyers and a bunch of other people. And he's now a music artist. You know, you can Google him, Jimmy Dennis with music being released and Hollywood paying attention and, you know, crazy stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. By the time he got out, I was always on my own trajectory of being an international publicist. So now that he got out free and we proved what we were saying for 19 years that he was innocent, now he's Mm -hmm. free. He's an activist and he's speaking about justice and he's, you know, on stages around the world, you know, virtually right now. And, and, you know, bigger things are happening. By the time he gets out, we're like, we're publicists. So it's hilarious. We were first like entry level sale people, young activists without a penny to rub together. Mm -hmm. 
And we started this campaign. And meanwhile, learned to write a press release, thought way along the line by the time, you know, years in, thought about making a business out of that part of it. And then kept in the activism. He's ultimately freed. When he gets out, he goes right in the recording studio. And now he's a recording artist and he has global publicists. So, wow. wow. It's like That's a crazy great. Hollywood story, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I can see Life that. Life is so. weird. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you so much for sharing and this was really a fun as well as quick chat with you and hope audience will find it useful whoever is trying to get into this particular field and trying to grow and I would encourage them to connect with you as well for further guidance. So thank you Tracy I really appreciate all your time and consideration being on thank the show. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Okay, all right. So this is all about Tracy and the way she's managing to lead her area of expertise. So our today's quote we are going to have is from Amy Jo Martin. And this is along the line of social media and positivity, negativity. So the quote says, social media is changing the way we communicate and the way we are perceived, both positively and negatively. Every time you post a photo or update your status, you are contributing to your own digital footprint and personal brand. So on that quote, we are closing today's episode. See you guys in the next episode. Until we meet, happy leading. Let's lead together. Stay safe. Bye for now.